before Islam, my name was Oliver. I grew up in Deptford and went to primary school in Deptford called Ashmi Primary School. In class, I always was talkative, creative, I got bored a lot and some would say, some, some, I would even say that I was, you know, like cause a little bit of trouble. I like creativity, so I, I like things like, like art. I wasn't that good at art, but I like drama. I was good at drama and, and music and things like that. So that's kind of what I led, I, I, like I went into to act, like my mum put me into theatre company, like theatre companies in Deptford. There's a, there's a theatre there. So I, like I was always active. My mum put me into gymnastics because I was an active child. She put me into, yeah, activities that would, you know, take my energy away because I just had so much energy. I was born with a heart condition and, and it, like, I was, a, I was a bit deaf when I was born as well. So, like, I had, like, problems as, so I was always in and out of hospital as well as a child, missing out primary school days. Like, it was, yeah, it, was, it, was, it wasn't that easy. But, yeah, I managed to, like, I, I made people laugh a lot. Like, that's what, that's what helped me through, I guess. And, you know, growing up in Deptford, like, it was easy just to go outside and just, go on the street with your friends. And that's what I like, even, as a, even in primary school, I like to go out on the street. I wasn't allowed, my mum would always chase me down, like she would always find out where I was and run me down and had a little, yeah, like I would always be on, on, this, on this going outside, like tr just, just trying to have fun, I guess. At the end of primary school, I actually got excluded for swearing at a teacher, like that was a big thing in my primary school. Not, and and they, they, someone told the teachers I had a knife on me because, uh, like a little pen knife, someone told the teachers that. So when I went, I went to, as, as I, when I left primary school, I went to um, Deptford Green. And at first I was a bit like skeptical. I didn't want to go there, but my mom, my mom put me there because it was close. And we moved to, um, we moved from Deptford to New Cross, like middle of New Cross. So it was easy just to get to Deptford Green. So when I went to Deptford Green, made a couple friends, obviously the areas in, called ghetto. I was out all the time, straight after school, out. Like, and at 13 I was already basically like selling drugs, trying to make money, like, it wasn't easy. I don't think, like I was a middle child, so I felt like I lost out on a lot of things. Like my brother would get brand new things, and then I would get that handed down but it was too, it was too either, it wasn't the right size for my little brother, so he'd get brand new things. So I was always getting the, the middle thing. So I'd, I wanted my own stuff. So I just, I just went out there like, just, and started, and my mum, like, it got, it was first, it started as like, little, like not, not too bad, then it, like at 14, 15, I was making a lot of money. I'm not gonna lie, everyone, everyone around knew that I was doing that. But it causes jealousy. And I was on my own doing it. Like, well, it looked like I was on my own doing it. So, I, like, I was still going to school as well, but that kind of started taking over more and more. Like, and then I got to my GCSEs, passed them. Not that, like I got 11, um, mostly that like drama and that was good. Art was kind of good. Maths and that wasn't, it wasn't that good. But yeah, the, 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 the road thing took over more, like, I, I enjoyed it, it gave me what I wanted. And I didn't realise that people, I was so young, I didn't realise people can get jealous of what you have. And just because I wasn't hanging around with them and sharing what I had, like, they tried to stop me. And at 16, like 17 maybe, like, a big, a big thing happened where I got accused. Well, I got, I got attacked and then accused of attempted murder. So, at 17, uh, I ran, uh, uh, I'm not gonna lie, I ran out of town and I tried to get away from it. And eventually I came back and I was on bail for two years. So obviously all the money thing kinda, kinda stopped and I went to a trial. I, I went to the trial and it was, for attempted murder and for GBH with intent. Yeah, so, subhanAllah, I remember at, back at, when I was 11, 
obviously I had a heart condition and it got to the point where I needed like a, a, a valve replacement so it took about like the best uh, surgeons in the country it took about seven eight hours eleven like yeah seven eight hours to do the operation and after that it was it was one of the biggest things that I went through and the recovery was was crazy because I was even when I wasn't allowed it back to school for months and imagine at 11 like the, this is important because a year later my next door neighbor she she died right in front of me kind of and that just shows me like the year before I was out I, I was saved somehow like the operation actually saved me like if I didn't have the operation it, I, w I wouldn't I wouldn't have been able to go on like living and this girl she fell right in front of me for no reason she was talking to me and for no reason she fell and died so you, I was looking down at her and I realized that this is just this is part of a cycle and at 12 years old that that hit me I wasn't sad I wasn't happy it was just part of a cycle that's what I took it as so back, back to being on trial, the first trial was, was both charges and the first trial was, was both charges and alhamdulillah they, they proved that I didn't attempt to murder anybody and they couldn't prove that I, 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 I didn't try to cause GBH so they needed a second trial. On the second trial the barrister that I had was a, was a Muslim and I didn't know that until he salaamed someone and I was like, what's that about? Like, do you know that guy that you just salaamed? And he says, no, I don't know him but because he's a Muslim we say salaamu alaikum which means peace be upon you that's the first kind of introduction that I had to Islam like I, except for going back to the, the, the girl that died next door I went to her janazah because her fa she was Muslim, her family was Muslim and, I, and they asked me to come to the the janazah, so I, I, I dressed in a kameez and I, and I went to the mosque and I did wudu and I prayed and I made dua and the brother of the sister told me when you make a prayer make it straight to God don't make it through Jesus don't do any of that just make it to God and see what happens so I made some, I was young but I made some serious prayers like I remember it kind of kind of clearly and then so on the second trial now, that was just a GBH of intent. So throughout the trial, the brother was, I was asking him questions. He was, he was telling me about Islam, like about the prophets, about Jesus, about Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, about, about, about the whole thing and, and the similarities between Christianity and that. So it opened my eyes and he saw that I was interested so he actually gave me his, his own Quran then I spoke to my next door neighbor who, who I said you know I'm thinking about Islam can you can you give me some information or something and he brought a he brought a teacher like a, they call him Ustad or something like that and he for, for about for about a month came to my house every day my mum, she didn't like it. She don't li like my family did disagree with the whole whole thing. They didn't, they didn't, didn't like me. Like they didn't like this guy coming in my house with a big beard. Like they didn't like it. Like they didn't like it. So they, like I suppose my mum got worried because I'm and like an Asian man with a big beard and a long gown. You know, it's just it's not long after 9/11. Like. I should have I should have understood that more but you know me being me I didn't really understand that so I just I just kept kept him coming to my house and he he taught me a lot and then at the end of him teaching me about like everything he spoke about he said everything I said is from the Quran nothing is from my own words and I said because because of that I agree with everything that that you said and I want to take my shahada so he said I must um, take ghusl and 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 then I went next door and took my shahada and it was beautiful my f when I took my shahada as I was taking it it felt like I knew the words already and my body from the feet 
was like it was filling up with warm water, like my body was empty and it was filling up with like, I don't know, I can't explain the feeling properly, but it's filling up with something, something until it got to my eyes and then I started, I started crying. Like it was, I was, my body and my mind were so happy. And, and from that I, I tried, you know, I was trying to practice, but I tried to keep it secret from my family because they, they, they they already showed their, their this that they, they already showed that they didn't they didn't agree with it. So every time I'd go to the mosque with a khamis on, I'd tuck it in before I go home and go in just normal. Like, but I was still on the road. I won't lie, I was still on the road. And then it got to the I think what was it? The first Ramadan? Yeah, the, I think it was the second Ramadan that I was Muslim. I. I I, obviously I was fasting, I went to the mosque every day, I was going to lessons as well at a brother's house, it was good, like mashaAllah and then, yeah, like I done itikaf in, in, in the masjid and, and after, like after that, my, my, my family, they said if you want to carry on being Muslim you can't come, you can't stay here so I stayed in the mosque for like months. The masjid let me stay there. I was basically looking after I was basically looking after the mosque, like helping out and that. And then got to the point where the mosque couldn't they couldn't accommodate me, you know, it's too long. So an imam took me to his house and I was I was staying with him for, for a long time. And then SubhanAllah. I was pra I was just I was practicing fully like and then I went, and then I, I had to start staying with a brother, stayed at his house. He lived near the masjid, so I lived with him, and and you know, staying in the mosque it was it was weird because I'm I'm new to the deen, and I know that the mosque is is only letting me stay there because you know my brother and and they they ha they basically have to let me stay because I got nowhere to stay, so it, it felt I felt. I don't know, I felt alone, I guess, like, it was crazy still, like, I, it was mad, like, I, I left, I, I started, you know when you just, because I was so keen about Islam, I, I started dissing all my old friends, like, because they were so rude, like, just diss them, like, when they had phone calls to ring me up, straight away I'm giving them dawah, but it's the wrong kind of dawah, I'm arguing, like, you don't know, you don't know the truth, like, I'm trying to tell them when I don't really know, like, I didn't, so when I'm arguing with them, I don't really have no weight in my argument. I'm a new, new Muslim, like, I barely know how to pray. So it was, it, was, it, was a, it was a crazy time in my life. That was a crazy introduction to, 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 to practicing, because even, um, I, did, I, I, I stopped grinding, innit? I stopped, I stopped the road thing, because... I really, I really learned about, like, the deen, and that was one thing that you have to come away from, because it's not just the, the money, you know, the haram money, it's, it's the lifestyle, you, you, that money stays in that lifestyle, it's a circle, innit, it's a circle, like, you, you make that money, then you've got things that you've got to spend that money on, because it's that lifestyle, you've got to keep up to date with it, you've got to get the trainers, you've got to get the girls, you've got to get... You know, you just got, you got to have every, me, I was prodded out at, at like 15, like, no one was, I, a boy had a prodder for I bought it from him because it just so it matches my, my, my outfit, like, I, I, I was, I was so indulged in, like, I didn't know anything but that, innit? That's all I come from, just blotting and just, obviously after that, just beef and things like that, like, and, like, when I was staying in the mosque, the, 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 the people that run the mosque, they didn't even, I guess they didn't want to tell me to my face that they couldn't have me there no more. So the Imam at the time that was, you know, leading Salah in Ramadan and like the Imam of the mosque, they asked him to tell, like, tell me and I think my, like, how I saw it is, he couldn't tell me just to leave, like, because he knows I don't have nowhere to go. So he invited me to his his house and I didn't realise until years later, like about three years into the into practicing, that 
at the time, every night his, his wife was making my bed, making me food, all of this. She was pregnant. And, and he didn't mention that. He just, he, just, he just did it for the sake of Allah, you know. He just let me stay in his house. So, like, I was, I wanted to practice. But like, like but he he you know what yeah, he took he took me under his wing properly like, took me everywhere he was going he was it he he was he, he went to um what do you call them madrasas like he was a busy imam like he did rookie I learned a lot from being around him like it was it was a good it was it was a good experience at the same time it was a very very difficult situation to understand like. How, did I put myself here? Like, like, is it worth it? I guess all them questions come. And then, like, alhamdulillah, brothers, the mosque that I, you know, that I stayed in, that's my local, that was my local mosque. On, like, one of them on Oak Road. So, the brothers did it. We all know each other. It was a good, strong circle of brothers, you know, young brothers that some of them have similarities and some of them are just, you know, reverts from, from this kind of life. Like, we just all, like, come together because we, we're trying to practice, you know. So, one brother, he lived near the mosque, as I said, and he, he, he just let me stay. And it was more comfortable because he's, like, my age. Yeah, so I was staying at the brother's house. Alhamdulillah, I stayed there for a, for a long time, like, as, as long as I can remember. But, you know, I got to know the dean a bit more, so... It wasn't just me trying to grow my beard, trying to wear the fold. I was actually learning at this point. Well, I was around a lot of brothers. Every kind of brother, like, there's so many, you don't even realise you're around a brother that's in a group. You don't even realise you're, you're around a brother that, you know, that's, that's got alter motives or whatever. You don't, you don't see that because as a new Muslim, you, you're sincere, you know. You're, well. You're, you're fresh, so you're trying to, you know, you're open to anything, basically. Whereas, you know, I should have, I should have done the, the things like learning Arabic first, whereas I jumped straight in at the deep end, like, there was brothers I was around, I shouldn't have been around them. That groups that, that you sh just shouldn't be part of. You know, they, like, a lot of people will tell you they, they know this and they know that, but really and truthfully, they don't even know Arabic. Or maybe they do know Arabic, but, you know, manipulation is, is just because someone's Muslim with a beard and a thobe, it doesn't mean that they can't trick you or they can't manipulate you into something that they want you to do. So, you know, you have to stay steady. You have to, there's a thing, you take the middle path. Like, there's a, that's there for a reason, because taking the middle path keeps you safe. Like, go, just, just be Muslim, innit? Like, it's easy. It's an easy way of life. You're making things difficult. We come from the road, so we're aggressive. So, yeah, so coming to the Dean is not, it's not, I'm not going to say it's easy. It's not easy, is it? Because you're, you're leaving a lot behind, so you're still remembering that. So you think everything in front of you is truth, or you think everything in front of you is, is good. And even in Islam, there's bidah. So there's, pe there's, there's brothers that will pray on you. Like, especially if you don't know, especially if you don't go straight into learning Arabic or something like, so you can read what you're being told. Because people will teach you things, and English, the English language is very limited. Whereas Arabic, you can say one word and it means so much. So I could tell you Islam means peace. Yeah, it, it, it could, it does, isn't it? But it means so many things. It means the one who submits to Allah, isn't it? Like, do you understand? So I, I can translate something the way I want to translate it to you if I want to, isn't it? If someone's trying to manipulate you, you won't even know because they're good at it, innit? They've been they trained themselves to get you manipulated. Like you're not the first. Every like every like most brothers that come from the road, that's what they go through a lot of the time. They go through pull it this arm that way, that way, that way, like and then you get confused. That's in fact like I practiced a lot and I was like, in the deep and I was swimming deep. I was I was I was uh, as I said, I wasn't learning all the things I should have been, like Arabic and things like that, whereas... And then it took me, it took me back away from Islam, basically, like... I, uh, like, years later, I stopped, I uh, basically stopped practicing. And Allahu A'lam, why, innit? But, could have been the reason, innit? Like, 
that I was in a deep end when I should have took it slowly. Alhamdulillah, Allah guided me away from all that. I'm not trying to say I'm perfect. I'm not, a, I'm not an angel. I'm a, every, like, everyone does wrong things. Like, but one thing I learned through, through my whole, through my whole experiences is that you can't swim if you don't learn how to swim because you're going to drown. So you can't mistake things like passion for truth, for hak. Because, you know, if you're, if you're thinking about coming to Islam or you're new to Islam, you, you might see someone shouting and, and f they might, it might look like it's from their heart. Like, so yeah, I'm down with that person, like, look at him, look at him, look, he's down, he's rolling, I'm rolling with him, like, that's not always true though, like, there might be something else, like, you need, you need to learn, you need to learn, and it's, e it's easy to learn, just, just take it easy, don't, so before, I was all over the place, I was, I was going here, going there, shouting, I was, I was going, even going to protest, like, Shouting about things I actually don't really know about where, alhamdulillah, like now I'm back at square one, I'm learning my deen, you know, and anything that I was associated with before, I'm free from that, alhamdulillah, I'm back to square one, I'm learning my deen, and anyone that's thinking about becoming Muslim or is new to the deen, they need to do the same and learn the deen, barakallah feek.